Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 13 and verses 20 to 25. Love the Lord your God. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you, a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards, excuse me, vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you, tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land he promised on oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he commanded us, that will be our righteousness. Thanks, Dave. This morning, I want to speak with you about how life is a journey. Before we do, let's pray. Lord God, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to fall on this place right now as water on a dry ground, to open up our ears, to open up our eyes, to open up our hearts, to prepare us for the life that you have for us. God, you have, you have created us, you have called us, you have made us. Some of us have made mistakes along the way. Some of us have had things happen to us along the way. Some of us are afraid of what is going to happen to us. But God, we come to you this morning as people dependent on you. Maybe today we haven't even begun to realize our real dependence on you. But today, God, I ask that you would pour out your heart upon us that the light of the Son of God would shine down into the, into the depths of our hearts and into the depths of our lives and that you would be glorified. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive you today. In Jesus' name, amen. My wife and I, we love to watch movies. One of the movies that we have recently watched was The Hunger Games. Now this game, this movie is really interesting because a young... Uh, sister decides to step forward and give her life so that her uh, sister would not have, her younger sister who's six and she's 15, would not have to die. She decides to uh, subject herself to pain, to ridicule, to uh, death so that her sister will not have to suffer. And I want to say to you that two things are true today. You know, our soldiers have done that and are doing that for us. And so we need to thank them for that. 
And another thing is true. Did you know that no one can carry your cross? That not your friends, not your family members, not your loved ones, not your co-workers, not anyone that you know. Sure, we can empathize with each other. We can call each other. We can care for each other. And we can be there. We can even say, I've walked this road before, but here's one of the things I've found to be true. The road is a little bit different for each one of us. But there is one who has carried your cross for you even further than you could carry it for yourself. There is one who not only carried the cross, but climbed up on the cross to die that you and I might have life. His name is Jesus. You see, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 that even when we were dead in our transgressions and sins, Christ died for us. The ungodly, we didn't have anything to give to Him, yet He climbed up on the cross. He cared for us, and He gave His life for us. I want you to know of two things this Memorial Day. It is a day to remember those who have died that we might live in the land of the free, and there is a God who has died that you might walk the path of the free, not only in this life and not only in this country, but all the days of your life and into eternity. We celebrate another milestone this morning as well. It's full of milestones, isn't it? Full of stuff happening this week. You know, I I drove past a graduation party on my street, and the street was so full, East Canton, listen to me. It was so full that I thought I might take out every car that was in my way when I drove down the road. I'll have you know that I didn't, so everybody should be happy about that. But it's graduation Sunday. It's graduation weekend. Many of us are going to parties. Many of us are having fun times. And maybe you don't even know how to fit it all in. But this graduation. And even though we may have already graduated, I think we can share something with the graduates. There's something about the future that's unnerving to us. Something about the unknown that's both exciting and just unnerving. When our passage for this morning that Dave read for you, God has brought the people of Israel through an incredible journey. Forty years of a journey in the making. You see, the whole time the Israelites weren't ready to listen to God. They weren't ready to, uh, to do what He said. They weren't ready to go into the land. And so for over 40 years, they're prepared. They're made ready. God provides for them as one who loves them, who's patient with them, who cares for them all the way through. He takes them out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, and now He's brought them through the Red Sea on dry ground and now he's brought them to the very edge of the Jordan River and this Jordan River marks a passage for them you see on the other side of the Jordan River is the promised land that God has for them I want you to notice something that God created you listen to me folks God created you to take a hold of something Not to hold back, not to get sucked into who we are, not to be distracted by the world around us, not to care what others think, but to take a hold of what God himself has for us. And I want you to realize how uh, patiently God is committed to this. He cares for them every step of the way, through a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, by dry ground and through the sea. He tells them to set up markers. He tells them that he'll care for them. And they still have, folks, listen to me, they still have battles ahead. They still have wars to fight. They still are going to face difficult times. But God has told them, I promise that I won't leave you, that I won't forsake you, and that as you follow me, I will lead you through this into this promised land. But as God gets them ready for this, did you ever realize that God has to get us ready for the things that he wants to give us? So many times we want to say, but, but God, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to take it. I'm ready to have it. I was ready three days ago. I was ready three weeks ago. I was ready 30 years ago. And yet it didn't happen. You know, in my own life, one of the things I've found over and over again is I get my wish list. I get my hopes and my dreams and and we'll hear about that today and we'll think back about our own lives and maybe you even have some hopes and dreams and 
And we look at our list and we think, some of these came true, but some of them didn't. And I can't figure out why. I can't figure out why God would do that. I want you to hear this morning why. Listen to me, folks. This is a lesson that I am still learning today. I've had, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it's like, one of the things I'm so thankful for is that God in His grace, He doesn't give up on me. And yet He won't sell short on what He wants to give me because I want a quick fix or I want uh, my, my wish list marked off or I want to go faster than I really need to go. You see, the same thing is true for the people of God. He, he says, I want to prepare you. I want to get you ready for this. Here's what you need to know. You're going into a land that's filled with homes you didn't build, with good crops that you didn't plant, with good things that are ahead of you. And I want you to know this morning, folks, that Jesus has taken care of the work for us. You see, we are given eternal life. We are given hope and joy and peace and love that we didn't earn, but that because of Jesus' sacrifice, we are given fully but God says if you're really going to take a hold of everything that I have for you if you're not going to miss out if you're not going to hold uh, not stay on the other side if you're not going to let it slip through your grip you're going to need to know something you need to know that you must not forget me you must not forget me I want to encourage you today and tomorrow and the next day to do a couple of things. First of all, remember, I live in a world, I almost can't remember what I did on Tuesday. Have you ever been there? Some of you might not remember what you had for lunch by the time you get to dinner, right? I know that's happened to me. We live in a forgetful culture. Forgetful. I forget my keys where I put them. I forget my glasses. I forget. And not only that stuff. Forget about that stuff. God knows that we forget immediately the victories that he's won. The things that he's done. The things that he cares for us. You know, God says to us, I want you to remember. Did you know that every word that God speaks is spoken with a purpose? <clears throat> and here's the purpose. To release you from the life of sin and get you ready for the life ahead. And he says, I've commanded you these things that you might live. One of these words stuck out to me this week. He said, I want you to know my commands. I want you to know my word. I want it to be written on your heart, the New Testament says. I want you to not worry. I want you to seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, Matthew 6 says. Because I want you to have life. And so these commandments that he's given us set us free. But why do we shy away from the commandments? Sometimes we're afraid of them or they sound condemning or we think that we can't hold up under them. But when God says remember, it's more about the relationship than the actual doing. It's about remembering the victories that God's given you with your children, with your grandchildren, with your loved ones. For yourself in the hospital room, remembering the victories. Remember when God came through for you, when he gave you the, the very next breath you have, when he cared for you when no one else could. Folks, there are so many victories that we have, but I, I just sense that we can forget them. I want to encourage you, Mount Tabor, just as I encourage myself today, not to forget the things that God has done for you. Take time to remember with those who are graduating. Take time to laugh and to love and to hold and to say, these are the things that God has done for us. You remember when he provided the house that we need, the car that we need. You remember when he cared for us when we were in financial trouble, when we didn't know what to say to our loved one, when we lost a child or we gained a a struggle or a worry, something that's happened in your life, do you, can you see God? Can you see the glimmer of light in that time, in that darkness? You see, God says, I want you to remember that. I want you to stay close to me. So it's about remembering. This week, let me ask you, how much have you remembered 
God. How much have you seen God at work in your life? Folks, all God wants us to do is open up our eyes. And then he goes on to say this. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Later on in the New Testament, Jesus says, with all of your mind. Because in the Hebrew language, the heart took the heart, the soul, the mind, and the strength, everything into account. And so he says, with everything that you are, remember me. Love me. Hold on to me. The commands of God. I want, I want you to hear just some of them. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. What is required of you, a man, but to love justice and to seek mercy and to walk humbly with your God? Lay down your burdens and take up mine, for my yoke is easy. You are the light of the world. Let it shine. You are the salt of the earth. Let it, let it go. Let my word be hidden in your heart so that you might walk according to it. Let bitterness go. Let love reign. You know, I love that the Bible says these three remain. And we need to hold on to this. It says that faith, hope, and love remain. Faith, trust. Build trust into your life. Seek to be a trustworthy person. Seek to find people that you can trust. Seek to forgive. Seek to walk in trust. Hope. Put your, put your life in, in something that mean, is meaningful, something more than yourself. And here's what I love about hope. Did you know that hope does not disappoint? Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 tells us that God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. And his hope will not disappoint us. So when you feel your next ache or pain, whether it's in your heart or in your body, know that there's still hope. And love. Love is much more than a feeling or what we see on TV. It is this thing that compels us. It is the very nature of God that causes us to step forward to embrace. Did you ever realize, I'm going to just share this with you. Something I don't love what do I do? I shy away from it, right? Somebody tries to give you a task at work and you say, ah, uh, no thanks. You know. Or you just kind of take a few steps back and if somebody would ask you, you'd say, well, I'm not good at it, which is true. And by the way, I don't love it. I remember I've told my wife this, I don't love to do that sometimes. But what do we mean by that? We don't want to give ourselves to it. You see, love is really the doorway that opens you up to embracing all that God has. And so here they're standing on the, the just about to go into the promised land. And God says, I want you not to forget me. I want you to stay with me. I want you to look to me. And something will happen. You enjoy life. Now Joshua has the bat battle with Jericho to fight. Like I told you, there will be wars. There will be things that happen. There will be ups and there will be downs. But there's something that happens. There's a peace that flows like a river. There's a joy that comes. And I don't know about you folks. I think if I took a microphone around here, each one of us could say, you know, I could stand to have a little bit more joy in my life. Anybody want to agree with that? I could laugh a little more. I could sense purpose a little more. I don't know too many people who say, my tank is completely full. I can add another drop of what God wants to give me. In fact, I think there are many here today who might, if we were honest, say, you know, I'm running a little bit on half or a little bit on empty. So here we come to the Israelites and, and God says to them, I'm ready to give you 
all that I have in store for you. But you know, if you don't remember me, if you don't take me with you, if you don't uh, allow me to influence your choices in the way that you interact with your loved ones, in the way that you interact with the world around you, if you don't allow me to influence you, then you're not going to be able to take hold of it. I want you to realize something with me. The Bible in chapter uh, 4 and verse 23 of Proverbs says this, that the heart is the wellspring of life and that life comes out of it. And sure, the Bible doesn't offer necessarily uh, a million step process to do life this way. You know, you'll find every detail about every life. Well, what, what am I supposed to do on Tuesday? I'm, and those kind of things, you know. It's not an easy step process like you understand what I mean it's not a it's not a formula we're so much into it what's in for me what is my formula <laughs> but here's what God knows about you and me that really the center of our lives is our heart Out of the heart we speak, out of the heart we interact, out of the heart everything about us. And so if you allow God to do heart surgery on you, to allow him to talk to you about your relationships, about your money, about your uh, choices, about some of the things we may be addicted to, about our hobbies, about these things. Remember, God is always asking you to let go of something, not to just take it away from you, but so that you might take a hold of something even greater. Not only that. But I want you to realize something with me. When Adam and Eve sinned, God came to them and clothed them and he said, there will come one who will be your savior. God led them through the Red Sea and led them to the Jordan. Jesus has walked the road before you and me and he's come back and he'll come back again. Do you ever realize that? I remember uh, when I ran with somebody once, I... Often I get blown away. Let me just admit that right off the bat. Right? If, usually if I run with somebody, I don't like to do it because they'll just be three miles ahead of me. <laughs> you know. But a couple times I've been moved faster than some of the other people and I've come back to run with them. You know, you just kind of circle around so you can run together. And you know, that's kind of how it is with Jesus. He's run the race ahead of us. And now he's come back to be with us. And the Holy Spirit, who God has given to us, lives inside of us. And he said, I have come back to care for you. I have come back to lead you every step of the way. So last week, I, I asked you to get your shoes on if you were here. You know, one of the key things about life is to get your shoes on your feet, to have them tied and get them ready. One of the things I didn't share, if you weren't here with us, I said, I, I laughed to myself because when I saw this happen with my boys, I, I actually thought of myself. Uh, I, I love to go and do things with them, to give them things, to care for them, uh, and to do these things. And, but so often I want to take them somewhere and give them a great experience, but I have a hard time getting their shoes on. Remember we mentioned that last week. I just have a hard time getting them to put their shoes on. Anybody else in that, that boat? But then there's a time of, okay, we've got our shoes on, but now we need to walk with God. And this summer, I want you, both you and I, to get a hold of this. This walking in a relationship with God. It's about celebrating what God's done in the past. You see, that victory, that thing that we remember, will give us strength for the next step that's ahead. And then it's about walking with God into the future. And not worrying about what's to the right or what's to the left, or what's around me, but saying, God, I am here for you. 
And the Bible tells us that when we do that, God says, well, I'm here for you. Let me lead you into the future. So it doesn't matter where you go to college. It doesn't matter uh, where you're at in your job. How bleak things look at home. I want to encourage you that if you work on your heart, if you allow the word of God to penetrate your heart, you'll begin to see changes in you. You'll begin to see changes in your situations. And I will say this to you. That you'll be prepared to be right where God wants you to be, right when it's time. Not before and not after. I'm going to end with this story. I learned an important lesson when I was an intern in Washington, D.C. There are a couple things I learned. Well, three. I'm going to give you three. The first one is when you're riding on the subway, never let go of the, the bar ahead, <laughs> above your head. Let me explain why. Someone was uh, messing, messing with me. You know, I'm going to tell you about the subway. I don't know how many of you have ridden on it, but when you get in there, at 9.30 in the morning or whatever time, 8.30 in the morning, and you get ready to go to work. And I mean, you are packed like sardines. You understand what I mean? You, I mean, you are hit face to face with people you don't know. You could have like the most intimate conversation with them because you are jammed in there. And then there are times that the car is open. Well, this time it's open. And my friend is messing with me, and I let go of the, let go of the bar. We're flying. On a subway, you are flying. Let me just, I don't know what speed you hit, but you hit a speed, believe me. And uh, all of a sudden, the conductor hit the brakes. You know where I went? (laughs) Flying backwards. (laughs) I'll tell you this. If you don't hold on to God, folks, life can make you go head over heels. But as long as you're holding on to God, you're right where you need to be. The other thing I learned is don't go without really knowing where your destination is. I remember I went to uh, what I thought was Maryland University. I was going to meet up with some people at Maryland University. And so I looked, you know, I, I thought, boy, I'm getting good at this, right? I, I know I can track with these uh, subways. And so I saw Maryland University get on this subway, and it's kind of weird. You have to get on this one, and then you jump off of that one after a couple stops, and you get on the red line, and you move from the red line to the blue line to the yellow line, and eventually you're there. Well, so I picked Maryland University, and I found it. Guess what happened? The stop was 20 minutes away from Maryland University. And so here I am standing out there <laughs> thinking, what am I doing? You can't know where you're headed unless you know where you've been. And listen to me, folks. You'll never get where you're going if you stay where you are. It's less about the destination and about the details and about the one who is directing your life. And when you trust in God that way, there is joy ahead for you. Because Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And as he's come back to run the race with you and to help you with your kids and with your finances and with your struggles and your troubles, he is coming back to lead you so that you might sit down and rest. That you might have that joy that because he stood in for you, now you don't have to have the penalty, but you get all of the joy that's at the finish line. You see, that's the amazing truth of the journey. And as we head into graduation Sunday and we move from one thing to the other in, the, in life, remember not to forget God. Remember not to forget His goodness. Remember to know where you're headed and how you're getting there and who's with you. And most of all, listen to me, don't ever let go of the God who created you. Because if you do, life will hit the brakes and you will roll backwards. But as long as you hold on to God, you are right where you need to. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for each and every person within the sound of my voice. This morning as we sing this last hymn, I pray that you would speak to us now. That you would bless us. That you would prepare us. 
Help us to walk in trust, in love, and in hope. Help us to rest in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand and sing our closing hymn?